Hey guys, former WWE Superstar Hardstyle here. Make sure you're tuning in to Aaron and Tom and the incredible Hot Tag Hooligans podcast. I know I will be. Take care. Welcome everybody to the Hot Tag Hooligans Wrestling Podcast Show. My name is Aaron. Joined with me as always is Tom. Tonight, our very special guest is Miss Holly Cromwell. How's it going, Holly? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing pretty well. <laughs> doing pretty well. So talk to us a little bit right off the bat. How has the pandemic actually affected your wrestling career in the last few months? Um, I haven't been working, that's for sure. <laughs> There hasn't been much going on. Thankfully, though, Indiana is, like, one of the few states that's letting wrestling happen. So we're actually able to run shows. And, like, the last couple months, there's been more going on, which has been really good. You got a big one coming up. You're wrestling that girl fight with Pitcher mm -hmm. Poison. Let's talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that real quick. So this is going to be my first Pick Your Poison. I was supposed to do it last year, but I wasn't able to. I'm really excited. I love, love intergender wrestling. I did that for – ever in my wrestling career and I still love doing it so I'm really excited about this tournament and who is your partner going to be my partner is the glitch Kai Faden have y'all ever teamed up together before in any type of match we've never teamed up but he's actually my roommate so <laughs> and you're taking on Billy Starks. Billy Starks yep Tell us about your little rivalry with Billy. You two have had bumped heads a few times throughout your career. Oh, I love her. She's such a, she's such a little pain in the butt, but I love her. She's one of my favorite people to wrestle. She's definitely a hard hitter. I will say that for sure. She's busted my mouth open before. <laughs> so, so she's got a receipt coming this this time at Girl Fight. Is that correct? Possibly. Possibly. I will say that. she. There's probably something coming her way. <laughs> hey, she's got a birthday coming up. You can't ruin her teeth before her 16th. Hey, I have a birthday coming up, too. <laughs> but you've already I had your 16th. This I mean, is a I big turned, one for her. I turned 26 on Christmas, so I'm, I'm there. <laughs> so, you're a, so you're a Christmas baby. How, mm -hmm. how is that? I've always been so glad that I wasn't born on, like, a major holiday. Were you a kid that just got – just one set of presents and they're like look this is all you're getting it's christmas and birthday or they actually you ever get to celebrate both of them at once uh my parents always always tried to separate them because it wasn't fair to me because it wasn't my choice so they've always we've always done christmas in the morning and my birthday is celebrated at nighttime i can see that's pretty good <laughs> my, my, my two kids are kind of spread out throughout the year so I, that's it's good not, it's not a big financial uh, strain on me as I needed to needed it to be. So mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about your wrestling career. Uh, mm -hmm. You're still just very young in the wrestling game. You've oh, got yeah. less than five years mm -hmm. in the sport. But talk to us about how you got started in professional wrestling. So I've always it's the first time I watched wrestling. I would think I was ten, and I'm pretty like if I remember correctly, the first thing I ever watched it was during Matt Hardy and Edge's feud when they went off the ramp into the like power boxes on Raw. And the second I saw that, I was like, that's what I want to do. That's it. This is everything I want to do. So when I turned 16, I remember I messaged um, Buddy Wayne in Washington. And I was like, hey, I'm really interested in coming to your school. I want to train. He told me I wasn't able to until I turned 18. So I finished school, did whatever, and then I turned 20 and was like, okay, I need, I'm not getting any younger. I need to do this now. So I started training with Buddy Wayne out in Everett, Washington, and just not, I'm never, never want to do anything else ever since then. <laughs> so is that where you were actually living at the time in Washington State? Yeah, so that, I'm actually from a city called Bellingham, Washington. That's where I'm from. Awesome. Because if you were around here in Indiana, you probably could have started just a little bit earlier. Right. If I would have been out here, I could have been able to start with, like, um, Billy Rock, like everyone else did out here. Awesome. Go ahead, Tom. 
So you talked about inter, intergender wrestling being pretty big in your career so far. Um, we've talked with several guests about intergender wrestling uh, multiple times, and that's something that uh, I'm a big fan of, and I really try to push that and support that. Uh, I think there's a lot of good storytelling that can be told, um, and it also promotes, in my opinion, it promotes equality for women. Mm -hmm. uh, and give us kind of your take on that, and also kind of tell me about some of your favorite intergender matches and things like that. So, um, like I said, it's like, it's huge for me. Cause when I started at buddies, I was the only girl there for a year. He'd never trained a girl. I was the only one he'd ever had. So it was, it's always been really big to me because I'd never wrestled any girls until I branched out and did anything else. And like, it's really important to me because people, people always want to throw domestic violence into intergender wrestling. And it's ridiculous because it's absolutely nothing like that. Women are consenting to wrestle men. A domestic violence is not consent, so it's completely different. And it's so offending when people try and throw those together. And like, it's just, it's just ridiculous how so many people have such a weird stance on intergender wrestling. Because we all know, we all know how wrestling is. We all know what it's about. We all know it's scripted. Like I don't under, I, it's so weird to me. Um, a lot. Some of my favorite intergender matches I've had have been probably my friends in Seattle like I, my friend out there his name is Kingpin Johnny Flynn he's one of the best wrestlers in the Pacific Northwest I, Northwest I think he's just like a Swiss army knife he can wrestle anybody he's just so good and I wish a lot of people out there would get more like eyes on them because it's, it's such a small area that people aren't really watching uh, I'm trying to I haven't wrestled a lot of guys lately so it's kind of hard to think about <laughs> Um, I did a scramble match with Punk Pro in January, and I got to wrestle, like, my roommate, Kai Faden, Trevor Reed, and it was just, it's so fun to be able to do matches like that, where you have guys and girls just sharing the space, enjoying it, like, showing what they can do together, and I'm kind of, I'm excited, because I actually have, I have a match next month in Vegas with Chris Bay, and I'm really excited about that one. <laughs> wow that so who who is that actually for which promotion is that for i feel so embarrassed i can't think of what the promotion is but i know it's at the fsw arena i so just when you, can't so when you say that you're going to wrestle someone who was the former you mm -hmm. know x division champion in impact mm -hmm. who is getting ready to be in the super j as well mm -hmm. how do you mentally prepare for a match of that caliber <laughs> Uh, Chris thinks he's big and bad, but he has another thing coming to him. He's, he's out there. I'm a little more of a wild card because I don't have as many matches out there as Chris. I can study him. He can't study me as much lately unless he has IWTV like most wrestlers have. It's like people want to say that I'm like the up and comer that, oh, it's Chris Bay is going to show this new kid what's up. I'm pretty sure I'm wrestling, wrestling longer than Chris, so I think I have a little bit of an edge on him for that one. <laughs> so, so when you look at your career so far mm -hmm. and again it's it's still very new in mm -hmm. the world of professional wrestling but you have already made some major waves you've wrestled mm -hmm. for shimmer and mm -hmm. you've wrestled for rise already which are two of the most premier uh female wrestling promotions that there is talk to us about those experiences and did you feel like that you were ready at those times when you got those opportunities and that wrestling for both of those companies has meant so much to me. Because since I started wrestling, Shimmer was always one of my goals, like every other women's wrestler. It's, but Rise was, Rise was one I didn't know about. Rise was newer. And I started with Rise, at Rise 2, I believe. And that was, in, that was in California. And they actually gave me my first match with a woman because I wrestled uh, Ruby Rays down there. <laughs> um, it just, it means a lot to me that Kevin Harvey, he trusts me so much to give me the platform he does and to give me the opportunity to show what I can do and it's, it's just always oh, meant so much to me for him to let me like team with Sue Young and me and Elena Black wrestling Dust and Raven's Ash like it's meant so much to me that he's trusted me so much to let me have these matches now with Shimmer I was very proud to do my debut last year. I don't think I was fully ready for it. The match didn't go exactly how I wanted to. It happens. Everyone has that moment. I just got to get better and come back and show 
Dave Prezak that I have what it takes to be with him. We're looking at the women empowerment movement all across professional wrestling. There are more and more all women's promotions popping up here and there. Mission Pro Wrestling is one mm -hmm. of them. Flawless is another one down in Tennessee. When you see stuff like that start to pop up across the U.S., how does that make you feel? It makes me feel very proud to be a women's wrestler because we get such a bad rep that, like, so many – and it's so many wrestling fans want to say that women are only getting spots because of how they look and no one wants to see no one wants they think no one wants to see when women's wrestling when women's wrestling has become such a hot commodity that women are having such better matches than the men are that's what people want to see people want to see the women going at it because women are beating the hell out of each other just to prove ourselves just so we can have the same spots as men when there's one women's match on a card and eight men and they think that that's enough it makes me so proud to see these Mission Pro and Flawless popping up because it gives all of us more opportunity with each other instead of having to fight the men for a spot. Now, now uh, your character is kind of different from a lot of them, which is fantastic. <laughs> uh, makes you stand out and uh, gets more eyes on the product. And I think that's a very good thing. Can you kind of talk about the development of your character and where you started out to where you are today? No, that, that's been a, it's been a long road. Anyone who's seen me from the beginning knew I was just little Holly Lane in my Bailey-esque looking gear, just kind of not, I didn't have any, any clue what I was doing. So many people just told me, I was told by tons of people just to be a cute baby face because that's all people wanted to see. And then, so that, I took that with me when I moved to Florida in 2017, I think it was. I was down there for a few months doing that. And then I, when I came back to Washington, I started, well, I'm, I'm going to play with this a little bit. I'm on my own now, so I'm going to just try and do my own thing. And so I had developed it into doing this weird anime character gimmick because I had bright purple hair at the time. And that kind of evolved into, I wanted to use the Black Moon, which is from Sailor Moon, as my billing. So that kind of went with that. And then I started to shape like, okay, I'm just going to call myself the Queen of the Black Moon. Let's go, let's go a little darker. Let's go more towards that. And then I, I talked to Kevin Harvey a lot about this. I didn't know, I had no idea what to do because I was kind of stuck. And then I just decided, I was like, well, I'm kind of doing a weird dark gimmick anyways. So I dyed my hair black, decided... I'm changing my name. I'm going to be a witch. Holly Cromwell. That's it. This is who I am. This is kind of who I am in my normal life anyways. I like to call myself a witch anyways. It's kind of just me. So it's just like, it kind of was perfect, the evolution going from just dark into, oh, this is just me as a person, and I can actually use it in my wrestling because it's just, it's me. <laughs> and you mentioned that you feel like that you're kind of like a witch in, in real life. Mm -hmm. So you're into the tarot cards and, and things of that nature. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Tell us about how you kind of got into that type of stuff as a kid growing up. Now, it actually, that is my, that's a, that's, a, that's a phase I've gone through in my 20s, actually. I didn't do any of this stuff as a kid. This is my kind of discovering myself in my 20s, going through my goth phase. <laughs> hey, we're still discovering so started... ourselves now, so you're okay. <laughs> I just, I've always been super interested in, like, the supernatural and, like, the paranormal, and I've had so many as what I consider paranormal experiences that I've always kind of had a thing with that anyways. So just kind of moving towards learning tarot and like my having crystal balls and like candles hanging around. It kind of was just a natural progression as a person. <laughs> so when you watch shows such as like ghost hunters and things like that, I am a, I'm a believer <laughs> in the spiritual world. I, I, mm -hmm. I 100% am. And I believe I've seen a ghost before in my life and, and things like that. So when you watch shows like that, do you buy into all those shows or do you feel some I mean, like kind of cheesy and fake or kind of depends like they're on TV so they're kind of doing what they can to get to get the views on it but you never know some of the things they could be showing are actually true some of the things they hear some of the things they see you actually you never know they could be capturing something Have you had an experience that you would like to share? Oh, I've had so with many the, experiences. With the My the first one I remember um, was when I was little I was asleep and my bedroom door was open and there was like a light from the living room and I wake up and in my doorway is just a white column, like a white figure just standing there. And I thought it was my dad at first. So I was just like, what are you doing? Go away. And I went back to bed and I was like, oh, that was just, that was 
probably a ghost standing in my doorway just watching just watching me <laughs> awesome yeah I've, I've you know we live in i live in kentucky of course he lives mm -hmm. in indiana as well but around here you know there's a lot of haunted old haunted houses a lot mm -hmm. of old stories and i love i love digging into that stuff and the history of that type of stuff as well um you know there's stuff i now own the house that my grandparents used to live in and my grandfather's now passed. So every once in a while, we'll hear a noise or something, and my wife would be like, that's Pappy. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, probably, right. Probably is, probably is just walking around the house. So, yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. Go ahead, Tom. So I am very skeptical. So, um, <laughs> but, you know, the story that you kind of told about the figure, uh, you know, just the standing over watching you, mm -hmm. um, it brings me to a, uh, a situation that happened to me and I've always chalked it up that I was just dreaming. Um, but it was a very weird situation because I, I believe I was asleep. Um, but there was a figure over me and I couldn't scream. I couldn't get up. I couldn't move. I couldn't do nothing. I felt like I was being held down. Oh, wow. And, and then I felt like, as I remember this, I felt like I closed my eyes and I prayed because I am a, fairly religious person I'm not a mm -hmm. bible thumper or anything like that but I am a religious person uh and I prayed and then when I opened my eyes there was nothing there and I was able to get up and then I went and looked in every closet I went in the basement I went in every room in this house trying to figure out what was in there and I mm -hmm. never find anything so up until you said your story I never thought that it would potentially could have been a spirit but now I have my doubts. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but. Now, Holly, hey, it this, never, this, it never this, hurts this to the, believe a little bit. This is the same guy, though, that believes in Bigfoot, but he can't. Oh, believe, for sure. He but he can't believe in the spirit world. See, it's, well, it's not, it's I not mean, that I can't. <laughs> I'm skeptical. But Bigfoot, that's obvious, right? I mean, I'm, I'm from the Pacific Northwest, so I have to believe in Bigfoot. It's in my blood. See? <laughs> awesome. So back, we'll, we'll direct it back to your wrestling career here. So we, but I love this. I love this. So we're talking about your wrestling career right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so far in your career, you've also been in the ring with a lot of talented superstars and, and women who have gone on to do some great things into some of the major promotions like AEW Dark and things like that. Name some of the talent that you've wrestled so far that you've taken a lot from, some mentorship, some guidance from. Well, the number the number one is always going to be Jessica Havoc. That's she's my wrestling mom. She took care of me when I li I actually I lived with her and Sammy when I lived in Florida. So she she took she was my sixth match. I had a match back with her in September at AEW actually. Last last year, um, she's the number one that I will take everything from. She's given me so much to help me make like help me make money help me succeed help me be able to do things just by being there for me and being someone that i can talk to and ask questions to and she will she's always tells me that if i need anything i can always ask her because she will always be there for me you know that's she's always going to be my number one yeah that's one thing that i've noticed about all the females that we've had on the show there's always someone else and it looks like a lot of the female talents are all rooting for each other and I see it on social media mm -hmm. all the time. Like, if, if Elena Black's on AEW Dark, there's 20 to 30 other talents congratulating mm -hmm. her and appreciating her. It's not that way always with the guys a lot of times. So talk to me about the camaraderie that you yeah. guys have as, <laughs> as, as, as the female talent, just being there for each other and helping each other out. I feel like it's probably we all kind of see it as – we're, we're all we have like the men they have the, each other they have like everyone on their side with women we kind of we have to be careful because how people are just naturally people are creepy people are weird people are gonna try and hurt us because we're women so I feel like it's just a natural we know that we are all that we have for each other so we kind of we have to be there for each other because no one else is going to support us we have to support each other because it's going to let other people see how great each other is if everyone's supporting them. So hopefully people can understand the women are just as good. We see a promotion like AEW right now. 
Um, I feel like that they feature more talent on the AEW Dark uh, than what they do as far mm-hmm. as on Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights usually just one match and one storyline. Now, NXT, on the other hand, I think they do an excellent job as far as their women's division and trying to push those talent. Do you have one favorite mm-hmm. over the other right now? Uh, if I like, I, I love them both. AEW has a ton of my friends always on there. And so it's always good to see kind of have to lean a little more towards NXT though, just because Shotzi Blackheart is one of my best friends. I love that woman. And so it's always so happy. I'm always so happy to see her succeeding and doing so well over there. Yeah. Shotzi's absolutely tearing it up over there. I, we, mm-hmm. Tom and I were talking oh, killing it. a t- couple weeks ago, uh, right when they did the draft and, we were just already mm-hmm. like they should go ahead and just move her to the main roster. I thought she would have been a great oh, addition yeah. that they should have because she's marketable. Uh, she's different than anyone else mm-hmm. that they have, and she can tear it up in the ring as well. Oh, Shotzi's killer in the ring. I've I think I'm I wrestled her twice. I wrestled her at Iron Spirit Pro, I believe, the second show in Normal, Illinois, and then I also wrestled her at Battle of the Sexes Two with Three Two One Battle in Seattle. And both times I wrestled her, it's it's always so much fun because she is just so – she always has ideas and she's always so much fun just to just to do anything with. She's always up for doing anything in a ring. Awesome. Now, uh, I always like to ask about the talent's bucket list of who they would like to wrestle. So giving that question to you, men or women, is there a handful of people out there that you're just itching to get in the ring with? I definitely want to have a one-on-one with Sue Young. She's another one of my wrestling moms. She's another woman that I absolutely adore. Uh, I should have thought about this. I should have thought about this a little bit harder. <laughs> I definitely want to have a one-on-one with Rosemary also because she is absolutely incredible. Um, for guys, I would definitely love to be able to wrestle Sammy Callahan because I consider him my wrestling dad just because Jessica Havoc's my mom. And so I would love to be able to get in a ring with him. I've never been in a ring with him. I've trained with him, like, briefly, but I've never been able to actually be in a match with him. And that would be, I think, incredible. Chris Bay was another one, but I get to wrestle him next month, so I guess that doesn't really count. <laughs> you don't get to wrestle Chris Bay. You get to beat Chris Bay next month. I do. Yeah, see, that, that's, the, that's the way you got to look at it, see? We're not wrestling. We're beating Chris Bay. Hey, mm-hmm. it counts. Oh, yeah, he, he's in for rude awakening. It counts. You just get to check it off after you're done. <laughs> So we like to do a little pop culture uh, talk with our guests sometimes and just so people can get to know each other. So you down with some pop culture questions a little bit? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. So you're at home and you're watching Netflix. What series are you watching? Actually, the first thing I would probably turn on on Netflix is uh, there's a series called Dragula, which is like an alternative, godly, gothy, like punk version of drag race but they also have drag kings on there not just drag queens and so it's super it's different and inter- it's very interesting the best horror movie of all time is what halloween the original john carpenter it's my favorite that's my favorite horror movie that will always be my favorite series like nothing will ever beat that are you a fan of the newer the halloween since they've revived it a little bit not really like i was i absolutely i always get a lot of flack i absolutely hated Rob Zombie's versions of Halloween because he completely like flipped the story which I understand it was more of a modern take wasn't a big fan of it I haven't really seen the newest ones they've done so I don't really have an opinion on those yet I'm just happy Jamie Lee Curtis is in them though <laughs> yeah I thought those were really well done uh the the newer one that they just came mm-hmm. out with with Jamie Lee. I thought it was well done they did a good job connecting some dots uh from the old ones as well so I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Nick Castle, the original Michael Myers, was Michael Myers in that one, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Yeah, I think so as well, yeah. So if you could go out to eat at any restaurant on a Friday night, where are you going? Honestly, I'd probably go to Applebee's because I work there and I get a discount, so it's, it's pretty easy. <laughs> so what are, what are you ordering at Applebee's besides some drinks? <laughs> I'm usually getting just like a pasta because they're usually we have we have we have good pasta. I'm assuming Applebee's advertising. We have really good pastas. <laughs> Your dream location to actually wrestle is where? Germany. Yeah. I love. I took four years of German in high school. It's always my dream to go to Germany. Like I want to do Japan, but like wrestling in Germany would be just number one for me. 
you're the first person to save to actually <laughs> save Germany for us. Yeah, that's that's. Oh, awesome. I'd I would love to wrestle for WXW. That'd be a dream come true. Is there anybody on in their uh, federation you'd love to wrestle? Oh goodness, I can't even think off the top of my head right now. It's like my, I'm drawing a blank on like people's names right now. <laughs> no, you're fine. In four years, when you look at your career, where is Holly Cromwell? Hopefully, Holly Cromwell is making a living off of wrestling. That's main goal. I don't have. I don't really have a goal to be signed anywhere. If that happens, that's cool. As long as I'm not. If as long as I don't have to go to a day job, I'm happy. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of talent. I know everyone's main goal is to have a constant paycheck uh, mm -hmm. where they can take care of themselves and better themselves. But at the same time, you know, a lot of talent that we talk to don't want to lose that freedom either. And they love being themselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would love to watch you on a Wednesday night, Monday night, eh, maybe not as much, <laughs> Friday, maybe not as much. But I would be so afraid of the character that you've developed and the individuality that you have uh, for them to put you in a clown costume. Uh, so it's always my biggest fear. Yeah. So is there anything that you wouldn't, wouldn't do as far as character wise? I, I would do just about anything. Like I have no, I have no shame. I kind of not, I'm not afraid to do anything, which is kind of what led me to what I'm doing. I like, I do comedy spots in my matches. I do like weird shit. Like I'm not afraid to do just about anything just to make people happy. I got you. Before we let you go, where can everyone find you at? Um, so my Twitter handle is at Hollyasaur. Uh, I got the Holly Cromwell on Instagram. What else do I have? Uh, I got a Patreon that's under Holly Cromwell. If anyone wants to subscribe to that, my YouTube channel. I believe if you just look up Holly Cromwell. You can find a playlist of a bunch of my matches. Yeah. Awesome. For everyone who needs to check her out, by all means, go to those links. Find her, and if you want to see her in person, she's going to be whooping Chris Bay real soon, and she's going to give Billy Stars a receipt before her 16th birthday. I sure am. <laughs> awesome. Holly, thank you so much for actually joining us tonight. It's always a pleasure uh, to talk to talent, especially the up-and-coming talent. Uh, that's something that we try to focus on here at our show because uh, we want more people to be able to see you guys and to, to book you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all about you guys, so thank you so much. Of course, thank you. <laughs> awesome thank you all right everyone uh thank you guys for joining us we'll be back later in the week uh we have puff coming up later in the week uh so make sure to t check that out as well also we got some good shows up already this past week as well we've got izzy and thunder rosa uh so if you guys haven't checked those out make sure you do that uh everyone stay safe and have a good night